Hi, today I'd like to introduce our new um, NAS book, which is the TBS-574TX. It's our new um, uh, all-flash NAS book, so it's got five bays on it. Um, we'll talk about the bays in a bit more detail. It's the first time we've ever done a thing like this, so I'll, I'll cover that in a bit more detail. Uh, we're making two options of the NAS, one with an i3 CPU and one with an i5. The, the RAM's a little different as well, but we'll cover that off. Um, so we'll get straight into just a, a small presentation about the uh, the NAS itself, uh, and then we'll go through a little demo setting it up for the first time. Um, so here's a um, sort of breakdown. I've shown this before of the sort of requirements needed uh, for different types of video editing, different resolutions, uh, different codecs, things like that that you might use. Um, so here's just a, a quick example, and this is why we're developing um, all flash NAS um, with fast connections like Thunderbolt 4. Um, so here we've got uh, Thunderbolt NAS for video editing. So we've got uh, great options for collaboration because everybody can access the same storage at the same time. Uh, with the two very fast ports there, we've got the two Thunderbolt 4 ports, one on the front, one on the back. You're able to connect two at the same time. It does also have a couple of Ethernet ports. So you've got uh, a 10 gig port on the back and you've also got a 2.5 gig port that works at 1 gig as well. Now you can also expand it as well, so if you need to create more space, obviously with just five SSDs, you might find a, a limitation on capacity. If you need more space, you can attach our JBOD expansion chassis to it as well. It's very user friendly. Um, we'll go through the operating system in a moment in a demo. And um, we've also got lots of uh, mobile applications that allow you to remotely access the NAS if you need to gain access to the data when you're not in the office. Uh, centralize all your backups uh, with uh, with the different options we've got for that. So once the data is in the NAS, you're able to uh, snapshot the data, protect it, um, and you can also set lots of permissions and passwords to prevent your files from being accessed uh, without your knowledge or without somebody wanting uh, that you want to access it to access it. Um, so we've got the uh, latest 13th gen Intel Core processor in here. So again, we've got an i3 and an i5. I'll give specs on those a little bit later on. It's got two Thunderbolt 4 ports, um, small metal chassis design, it's very compact. Um, it's also got five E1S drive bays. So this might be the first time you're hearing of the E1S uh, sort of drive standard, uh, connection standard. Um, it effectively deals with the shortcomings of M.2. So M.2 um, by its nature is nice and fast, um, but it just cannot be hot swapped. Uh, the, the type of connector it is when you push it in at an angle and then clip it down, that's not designed to be hot swapped. Um, so E1S is effectively like an M.2 in architecture of the, the drive itself, um, um, similar in size as well, but it does now have standard drive connections on it that plug straight in just like, say, a SATA drive would. Um, so it does mean it's now going to be hot swappable. Now, there's not too many manufacturers out there making E1.S drives, and the ones that are there might be a bit expensive now because it is very new. So what we've done is we've put in five um, E1.S drive trays that have an M.2 adapter on them. Uh, so that allows you to connect um, up to five M.2s in it. So we don't just give you one, we give you five of them, one for every drive bay, uh, so that you can connect your M.2 uh, 2280 size NVMe SSDs in there. Um, as I mentioned, it does have a, a 10 base T port, so that's 10 gig with an RJ45 um, uh, port. Um, and we've also got 2.5 gig Ethernet on there as well. Both ports can work all the way down to 100 meg, um, 1 gig, whatever you need it to as well. Um, and we have retained the USB one touch copy button on the front uh, right next to a, a USB port we have there as well. <coughs> now we do have um, the ability on this NAS to use both QUTS Hero and QTS. Um, so it does ship with QUTS Hero as standard, um, but you can switch it to QTS. Um, just a quick note, um, although you can change your decision on which operating system you use at any time, uh, because it is a different file system, you will have to uh, take your data off the NAS before you do a switch. So I would say um, if you're making a decision about which one you want to use, um, have a quick play when you first get it, um, swap between the two before you import all your data, um, just in case you want to switch and try both operating systems out. And so here's a, a front view of the uh, the device itself. So on the far left, we've got the Thunderbolt 4 port. Um, we've got a nice uh, removable grill there at the top, so that pops out. You can see the five lights behind there for each of the drive trays. 
Um, we do have a 10 gig USB Type-A port on the front as well. Uh, one touch copy button with your power button uh, and just some indicator lights there as well. Uh, moving around the back, uh, we've got uh, a pretty nice compact layout here. The other Thunderbolt 4 port is around the back here. Um, and you've got your 10 base T and 2.5 gig ports and we write on the ports there which one's which. Um, you do also have another 10 gig USB port on the back which is a, another Type A which is the blue port there. And we do also still have a USB 2 port um, just in case you wanted to connect any peripherals. We do have a HDMI output here so some people might want to connect a mouse or a keyboard which doesn't need a high speed port so that you can interact with that HDMI port uh, directly. Uh, so here's a quick look at the uh, the small drive trays that we've included. So these uh, these drive trays do have the adapter on them uh, for the uh, E1S drive. So they allow you to just uh, put the M.2 on as standard and clip it down into the secure little green clip there and it holds it in place. Um, and this effectively makes M.2s hot swap because the uh, M.2 connection isn't actually being hot swapped. It's the E1S connection being hot swapped when you pull it out of the device. Once it's pulled out, change your drive on the uh, drive tray, push it back in, you've just hot swapped um, an M.2 effectively. Um, so nice little drive trays that, uh, that push straight in and you get that uh, little vent grill that covers it up as well. A little bit more for those of you that don't know about the uh, 13th gen Intel uh, i3 and i5. So uh, depending which one you go, they have lots of cores on them. So some are performance cores that do most of the grunt work and then it's got lots of um, economy cores, efficiency cores on there as well. Um, that are going to do stuff. When the NAS isn't under much demand, it'll switch to those. Saves a lot of power usage as well. So we do have a couple of performance uh, statistics here. So here's performance uh, through the Thunderbolt 4 ports. Um, so we're able to achieve just over 1600 megabytes per second uh, on the right and uh, just over 1700 on the read. Uh, and we also did the same for the uh, Ethernet ports as well. So with the 2.5 gig and the 10 gig, uh, we were able to get... Um, uh, really high results there, effectively maxing out the standards for each of those two ports there. So um, lots of performance as well. Um, if you want to, there's more information on this on the website, so you can go have a look at it there. Um, you can pause it here. I won't leave it here for too long, but this is going to give you the information about um, how the CPUs are split. So, for example, the i3 has 12 gig of RAM. Um, the RAM is not expandable on these units, just the way the chassis is laid out, it's not possible to get inside easily, so we've just said non-expandable there. Um, so you've got four performance and four efficiency cores on the i3, uh, four performance and eight efficiency cores um, on the i5. Um, and they also change from, uh, uh, they're both, sorry, 4.5 uh, gigahertz there on those as well. So again, it's got the five E1S adapters in there, some information there about the uh, the dimensions, weight, things like that, power consumption. Um, but that's uh, that's everything we need to know. There's more information on the web page if you need it as well. Uh, so now we'll, we'll jump straight into a, a live demo of the device. So here is the device, completely factory reset. So, um, all I've basically done is turn it on um, and push some drives in. The drives I'm using are M.2s on those adapters. Um, so here's where you would choose to switch between QUTS Hero and QTS. So right now it's on QUTS Hero. I can click choose another firmware and I can switch to QTS. So very easy to do. So if you want to switch to QTS, uh, you can do that. It's about three clicks to swap. It's very quick, very easy to do. Uh, I'm going to stay with QUTS Hero for this. So I'm going to click Start Smart Installation, um, accept um, the, the software terms of use, click Next. Um, you can check for update on the firmware, make sure you're running the latest version, which I already am. Click Next. And now it wants you to do some personalization um, of the device itself. So keeping with the usual, I'll just call it the uh, the same as the uh, NAS model number, just so that I know which one it is. Oh, type all that. Put in the username. Pick a password. And click Next. Now you can set your uh, NTP server if you want to synchronize the time, so I'm fine with that one. Obtain an IP, that's fine, but you can also use a static IP and you can change between the multiple Ethernet ports, so I'll just leave it on Obtain, that's fine for what I need here. Um, and if you have Thunderbolt, this is where you'd have it connected, so if you've got the Thunderbolt connected, uh, this is where you could connect it. Uh, you can also connect it later if you want to. Uh, for this demo, I'm not going to connect the Thunderbolt. Um, if you want to see how the Thunderbolt was connected, we do have videos on our other units, the uh, uh, the larger versions of these, the uh, the, the TVS-H874T, um, for example. They I connected the Thunderbolt on those ones. 
so this is also uh, choosing what you want to do with the firmware update. So you've got a few options here. Um, so I'm, I'm going to leave it on the default one. So tell me there's a firmware update, uh, but don't update automatically. But you can change to whichever one that you want there as well. So I'm happy with all the settings. Going to apply, click initialize. And now it's going to go off and do the uh, the full setup um, of the NAS, install the OS, get it up and running, get it up and running on the NAS. Um, I'll come back after this process. Um, we'll leave it playing on fast forward here for you. Um, but I'll come back once we're able to log into the NAS itself and do some setup. Okay, so we're back now. Now we're able to log in with the same credentials um, that we did during the setup process. So login name of Craig. And now I'll type in the uh, password. Click login. Okay, so now we're on the home screen. Um, by default, it will open up the storage and snapshot screen. Um, it wants us to go in and create a storage pool uh, and get that set up. Um, so here we can see um, in the E1S, it's showing us that we've got the five drive bays. Um, so if I click into disks, we can see the five different disks. Uh, I've got a mishmash of M.2s in here. So I've got uh, some from WD and one from Kingston as well. Um, but as we go through, we see all the information. So even though it's through an adapter, so it's an M.2 device in um, uh, an E1S adapter, it is still showing up all the information for the um, uh, the drive itself so what drive what make things like that so we can see all those disks um, so what I'm going to do first of all is uh, go to storage and snapshots um, and I'm going to create a storage pool um, I don't have to give the advice here that I normally do to make sure that the first pool is created on SSDs because that's all we have on this NAS all SSDs so I'm going to click next I'm going to select all the drives uh, RAID 5 will be enough for me I'm going to leave that ticked click next Am I sure I want to continue with different size drives? I am. Um, so that's it. I'm going to go ahead, click next. I'm going to leave optimized performance on, let that complete. And I'm going to click create. Okay, so that's going to go off and create uh, the storage pool. It's also going to create this, the first volume. And this is effectively uh, getting the uh, the OS completely ready to use the disks that we've got inserted. Um, if you wanted to, in the meantime, we do have a few things on the notice board that popped up. So get started, some things, setting up your QNAP ID, security policies. So you can do all this while it's doing uh, this main settings. There are some things that you can get on with here. Um, but I'll leave all that for now. I'll just let this go off and create the first storage pool and I'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so that's the uh, first storage created. And if we go and check the uh, notice board here, um, we've already done step one effectively create a storage space. So that step's uh, completed now. We don't have to do that. We can carry on with the rest of the steps. Um, but that's a basic setup of the TBS-H574TX, our new compact all SSD NAS book. Um, again, we do it in two different options, an i3 with 12 gig of RAM and an i5 with 16 gig of RAM. Um, if anybody has any questions on, um, uh, on this device and needs to know anything, please do let us know and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Thank you. Bye.